the show for a long time. Yeah, you, it's, yeah. it's a little engraved in my head. At jmore.com, you hit the Amazon banner. This guy, uh, what's his name? Robert Chachery. Chachery? How would you say that? Chacher. Chachery. Chacher. Chacher. Hey, JJ, I just nice bought a name. memory foam mattress topper so my pregnant wife can sleep better through your Amazon link. Come to Seattle for a show. I'll get a fish thrown at you, take you up to the sky in the needle, and get Marshawn Lynch to go beast mode on your ass. That's from Robbie Shasheri. What, however you say your name, Seattle, Washington. So speaking of reverse vasectomies and getting a glitch go pregnant, this guy had to buy a memory foam mattress for his wife so his pregnant wife would stop complaining to him. What's your show, Chris Bird? It's uh, The Bird's Eye View. ChrisBird.com. The Bird's Eye View is my view of boxing. So it's a great show. And it's an internet show? It's an internet show. You can you know, watch it on YouTube, ChrisBird.com, you know, whatever. And, but people will, people, this audience is really on the Twitter and they'll, they'll touch you up right away if they, you know, hashtag more stories and they'll get to you. And, um, I want them to ask you whatever they want to ask you because you, you're on, you know, I'll, I'll say this, you know, my mantra always is put your name on it, put your name on it. I hate anonymous sources, sources say allegedly this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came, you sat and you were super honest and, you know, yeah. it, it's refreshing. Try to talk, try to talk about a lot of stuff. I don't want to be in court. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, that's know, not what we're I about. I want to be in court. We're about positivity, man, and having a conversation. Yeah. It's not an interview. We just sit and talk. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, something else get out there. Next thing you know, I'm in court. Everybody trying to sue me. I'm like, come on, man. I, I just said a, one I'll thing. I'll make a call. I'll handle it. All right. Do that. Make that. Uh, you fought weird guys. Yeah. You were in a weird era of boxing, like Razor Ruddick getting reverse vasectomies. <laughs> yeah. David Tua looks like the guy in the Hawaiian punch can, just throwing his ass around. He's a crazy. They said he fought out of Jersey, but he's from New Zealand. It's too bizarre yeah. for words. Punch, though. Ike Ibiabuchi uh, thought he was possessed. Yeah. And he knocked your ass out. Yeah. Hey, he cracked me. First time I've been, you know, well, I can say the first time. Arthur Williams touched me, too. But first time I got But stopped. not touch of sleep. No, no. Not touch of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the best nickname oh, I've ever best. heard. That would be the best. Touch, just a touch of sleep. Just a touch. Yeah, I can touch me. So Ike could be a Bucci. I, yeah. I'll never forget him because he seemed to have come out of nowhere. He was Nigerian. Yeah. And he just straight looked Nigerian. He looked like Christian Okoye, like when you see those brothers. Yeah. Like he, was, he, he looked Nigerian. He yeah. was like this guy that came Good into boy. the ring. And there was something weird about him. So it's like Livingstone Bramble kind of sold that like voodoo thing, got in your head a little bit. But when Ike Ibiabuchi showed up on the scene, you went, yeah. I think this guy's actually like was going to kill somebody. And it turns out yeah. the guy went to jail for rape. Raping a prostitute. For raping a prostitute. She's running out of his room, bottomless and stuff. But yeah. he also, there was other things and domestic and other things, but he, uh, yeah. And he, he could have done like 20 years, but he did an Alfred plea, which is where you say, I admit to being guilty if you let me go or you let me. It's it's what they did. The West Memphis Three, Damien Eccles and those guys were wrongly convicted, uh, but he was rightly convicted. Yeah. Um, so when you're in a ring with a guy like I, now, you, you know, because of medicine catches up to the, the, the science and stuff, you go, oh, he was bipolar. Like, you know, you read stories about I could be a Bucci. Yeah. He thought there were demons on the airplane yeah. and they'd have like uh, like Mr. T on the A team. They'd have to drug his milk and <laughs> literally like knock him out to get him on the plane to go to fights. Yeah. When you're standing across and you're clinching, there's nothing more intimate. And I mean that seriously yeah, yeah, yeah. than in a clinch with a guy that you're trying to put to sleep. Yeah. Are you in the clinch thinking, this guy's crazy. I want to get out of here. No. Nah, really? Nah, I don't care about that stuff, man. That's crazy. When you get in the ring, I don't care how crazy you are. Crazy ain't going to help you. Crazy. I mean, it may well, help his him. Crazy that. didn't help you. Hey, hey, hey. He may. Hey, if I got hit with that punch, what he hit me with by any other heavyweight, I'm going. I'm going down. That's just get caught. It's Pacquiao. He just got caught. He went night night. <laughs> I mean, he went night night. <laughs> hey, but it's part of boxing. You get caught. I mean, it's just that punch you don't see. You get caught. So if any other heavyweight would have hit me as clean as Ike hit me. Even though there's a lot of force behind it, great punch. But how do you allow yourself? It, did, did you do something wrong? No, you you don't do stuff wrong in, in fights. Well, you're not like this. You, you're, you're not okay, covering your face to get hand, tagged my, like my, that. Okay, I did something wrong. I didn't keep my hands up. Okay, but everybody don't keep their hands up all the time. It just none of them do anymore. That's why everybody goes to the UFC. Part, the hands part, are tight. Part of the sport. I right. mean, just part of the sport, and that's the beauty of the sport. 
one punch, especially heavyweights, one punch and it's over. Yeah. So I weighed 208, he weighed 244. And Larry Merchant criticized me, saying I was less than a man on air. How can you be less than a man? And I, I'm giving up all that weight. Less than a man side. because you got knocked down? Because, because I complained. I was out. When I got up, I was complaining to the rail. I didn't know where I was. I right. was out. And he was saying I was less than a man. He shouldn't be complaining. I'm like, you know, that's why you don't know boxing. You get cracked, you don't know where you are. People say, man, you should have kept your hands up or you, you should have stayed still. I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> where was that fight? It was in, uh, look, I don't even know. Really? <laughs> no, no, it was it's in Washington. Washington, D.C. or what? Oh, no, no it was in Tacoma. Yeah, like Tacoma. Yeah, 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 it was in Tacoma. Tacoma, you get so, caught. I mean, <laughs> you get said that. Like, yeah. you got pinned for selling weed. Yeah, yeah you, get, you, man, get caught, man, you get caught. You get caught. You get caught. So, when you get knocked out, what is it like to the, like, I've never been knocked out. Oof. What is it like? Do you just wake up? You know, you, they say, do it hurt? Man, you don't feel nothing. You go in his sleep. Ask, you ask Pacquiao. He didn't feel nothing. All he want to do is grab his pillow and turn over and, and be out. You out. It is a shame that people don't knock you out closer to your bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> just, just roll you roll in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get up from the uh, knockout, ex- explain that a little bit okay. to the common man. All right. For me, my experience, and, and I've been caught a few times, but I've never been knocked completely out sleep. But I've been out. Pacquiao was asleep. No, he was asleep. That but, was scary. But when, nah, I mean, in, in boxing, we all like to, he out. He ain't dead. He just out. <laughs> you know, he just, he, he'll wake up. And I mean, it's just part of the sport. In Mexico now, by the way, it's Jesus, Mary, Marquez. <laughs> that's, okay. that's the pecking that's order. It, that's it. That's, that's it. why he needed that that's fight. That's it. He was there. He up there. No, but when you get, when, when Ike hit me, I was asleep. I, I literally fell asleep. It's a the, button. It just goes the off. The ground woke me up. Oh. The ground woke me up. So when you hit the deck, when I hit, when you boom, woke up. I woke up. You don't feel nothing. You just, and then you hit the deck and you're asleep. You wake up. You're like, and my thought was, I looked at the referee's socks. I'm like, why am I looking? <laughs> and I'm being very honest. I'm looking at the referee's socks like, why am I looking at it? I got knocked down. I can't believe it. So I try to jump up real fast and I'm wobbling and and then I you know put my hands up. I didn't know where I was. And Ike rushed me and I went down again. He didn't even hit me. I just went down. Called knockdown. And then I'm still out of it. And I heard the five second they hit the mat for five seconds left in the round. You know, they hit a bell for ten seconds. Yeah. Or they hit it. I thought it was ten seconds. It is five or ten. Oh, now, okay. yeah, in certain places. That's probably in the contract too. So <laughs> yeah. Size of the be. ring, when they hit oh, the bell. Oh, all yeah. that's in the all contract. That. All that. Colored gloves. So, blue, red, or white. So they hit it. I thought it was the bell. I'm still out. So I walk back to the walking back to the corner. He's still throwing at me. I'm arguing with with the referee saying, Man, he, why is he hit me after the bell? They stopped the fight. Like, that's like what a guy that's less a, less than a man would do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> less than a man. I'm like, wow. Were you? Did you see the punch? You never see the punch. The punch you don't well, see. Yeah. Well, right. out. That's one yeah, knockout. Yeah, if I was seeing it, I wouldn't have been hitting. The, I wouldn't have been well, Sometimes, the have you ever been hit with a punch where at the last second you go, uh oh? Nah. Really? Nah. Nah. I, I'm slip master. If I was going to slip everything, but I slip it. You, you, I see it coming. The if one, you fight Ike and Biabucci a hundred times. And I would have fought him a hundred times. How many times did you beat him? Oh, I, I learned for it. I, 99 times. Because he wasn't going to. He wasn't gonna, He would never touch the, you again. N- look, he ain't hit me with that same punch. You got to be kidding. I'm not going to fight this guy. I'm not guy. asking about that one punch. I'm saying if he, you fight him a hundred times, you're he's telling gonna, me no doubt about it. it, it you in my the style next matchup, 99. I feel like I, I can So far, you're 0-1. Yeah. So you, now you got to go on a 99, 99 streak. And, and I feel, personally, I'm whooping 99 times. Vladimir Klitschko, <sighs> Vla, Vla, Vladimir Klitschko, hard matchup, hard style. He beat me twice. We fight 98 more times. I feel I'm whooping 98 times. You're out of your mind. I just feel, That's how I feel. I mean, my thing was, I wanted to fight Ike. But rematch. you just said the thing about the styles making the fights. When you go into the ring, you're not so sure, but you can do the best you can. And Klitschko is one of those guys. That it's you said hard. You're not so sure. It's hard, but but I still feel in my heart. I guess hey, I'm like this. It's tough, but I'm not gonna say be a punk. But like, wait, he just gonna. I'm beat not asking me. you to be a punk, but with Ike be a Bucci, you're like, man, get me in the. I can't wait. Yeah. 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 With Ike, you don't feel that way about Klitschko. No, no. You realize that I, you got your work cut out for you. But if it's scheduled. 
come on, man. I ain't gonna. Yeah, I feel I'm a win. No one's no one's it's questioning tough. your your machismo. I, I know, okay. I know that it's that it's not even machismo. Right. It's I just feel I know that's a tough fight. That's one fight. I'm like this. It's gonna be tough. Oh, I'm a win. Is that the toughest one? Yeah, style wise. Yeah. Anybody in your in your timeline? Is there anybody that you go? You know what? I don't really feel like fighting that guy again. That was too hard. No, that was too much work. No, no. I, a lot of time you go. Why isn't a rematch? No. They go because your era, like we said. Yeah. Like Lennox Lewis didn't want to fight you apparently. Yeah. And then you know Riddick Bowe didn't want to fight Lennox. Lewis. Guys were throwing belts in the trash can. Yeah. You, you belts that Muhammad Ali had. Yeah. You don't do that. Belts that Ernie Shavers would have yeah. killed his mama yeah. to get. <laughs> You're right. And never even got it. Bro, bro, Ernie like like Shaver. Ernie, Ernie Shavers would have been champion for the. He would have been a Klitschko. Yeah. <laughs> he would have given it a shot. So there's nobody that too you're small. like too, too small. small. There's too nobody small. that's what they said about you, and you be one of them. No, no, but it, look, look, I, I'm not gonna say you gotta have something special. I, I'm left-handed, fast, mentally very strong, and I and I read you like a book when I can get in front of you. So I'm gonna make you think. So really, before Emmanuel Stewart, this is Emmanuel Stewart talking. Rest in peace. Yes. He came to me and said, man, we haven't, this is with Vladimir Klitschko, we haven't studied a boxer this much ever. We know, we study every single thing you did because you make these guys miss, you hired to fight. I mean, you are, he said, it's So they studied you. Oh, he, he came to me and said, we studied you so much. We never studied a boxer like we studied you. Because I am. What a compliment. I, I, I was, yeah, it was. I was like, wow. And after I lost, he calls me. Well, he calls my lawyer. And your lawyer seems to really be in the mix. You know, man, he called me. You seem to have a good yeah. lawyer, man. Yeah. Nobody. No. I had to do this podcast no, for your lawyer. He, he's the best. He's the best boxing attorney in boxing. John Horner is number one. He he he's with all the guys. But Emmanuel took me to his room in in uh in uh vegas took me up i was to gonna the say room. yeah I, I, no well he took i don't want to go over the joke because i always interrupt too much i'm yeah. like this sounds a little dicey yeah, not, not Emmanuel dicey. took me to his but room he took me up to the room he showed me he said you have lovely hands he did say that you know that <laughs> that's funny he was a, you were the second one to say he said it. you're so lean <laughs> now you say all that said it <laughs> like this He's very lean i'm a manager steward <laughs> and we study you very much yeah <laughs> but no he was said that even close he, Kind of close. That was right. pretty close. Going on memory. But he said uh, um, he wanted to trade me. Okay. After his guy just beat me. Right. Because he felt I can get back to the title and win the title again. And that's like the mountain like, coming to Muhammad. And I'm like, wow. That, that's, that's you know, he felt that much about. Did you take him up on it? No, no. My father my traitor. I was going to Since say, I was a kid. My mother pops. and father in the corner, they would jump me, man. Do you look <laughs> Do you look back and think maybe dad could have co-trained me with Emmanuel Stewart? No. Really? Nah, nah. You don't nah, think Emmanuel's? Nah. Look, I'm not, look, obviously everything worked out great. You're two time champion. Yeah. You can you can talk and walk. Yeah. See. You know you're smart. You see? got a beautiful wife. Yeah, everything's working. Gorgeous. Carl's bad for crying out loud. You're doing well. Yeah. But you don't think Emmanuel Stewart could have taken you someplace nah. your father couldn't? No. No. You're not kidding yourself right now. I'm not kidding myself at all. Really? I'm a father Olympic coach, man. He he, he was. Who he, else in your father's stable? Huh? Nobody. He won't train nobody else. He, he had he had all kind of offers to train boxers, and he trained a few, you know, trying to come up. This but, is great. But he was like, I I want to focus on my son. I want to focus on my son. This is who I have. How I, hard is it to train with your father? Because a, a trainer, you can go, man, I'm tired of this shit. And with your father, it's it's hard. You just got to change your diaper. No, no, it was it was hard. My my mother too. My mother was worse than my father. <laughs> really? Oh, she, she put pushed, the pad, she put oh, on she, the mitts. Oh, she pushed me to a whole nother level. Really? She whispered in my ear during fights. Don't let that boy do that to you. You know how hard you worked. You know what you did for this fight. You know what you sacrificed. That's the for real stuff. You got three wives. You got three wives. Not three wives. I'm sorry. You got three kids and a wife. You got you got to get in there and fight. So that's the for real stuff. My father telling me instruction about boxing. But my mother tell me about life and what I gotta, what I gotta do to, to keep about life to pick, going. Yeah, you're about to lose this. I'm about to lose everything. So you get in there and fight. So you listen in the corner. A lot of boxers, you just see that vacant look in their eye. Like Zab Jude ain't listening to nobody in the corner. He doesn't care. He's just he, he, he doesn't doing he, his he thing. You know. Nothing. Oscar, I always felt, um, was a very good listener. Yeah. In the corner. Yeah. Uh, Somehow Manny and Freddie Roach communicated in the corner through telepathy because neither one of them spoke <laughs> to each other. I'm being serious. 
But it seemed like they listen, right? Yeah. Some fighters are very good listeners in the corner. Yeah. James Tony ain't listening nah, to shit. 